Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 20 of the Carrie Rolled On Show. That's my computer squeaking at me. Here we go. Episode 20 of the Carrie Rolled On Show, where we spend 30 minutes or so a week having conversations that matter to the mompreneur's body, mind, and business. I'm your host, Carrie Rolled On, and I'm a wife, a mother, a runner, a best selling author a personal growth junkie, and your total business BFF. And I help busy mompreneurs to find their niche, create an offer that serves that niche, and market it in a way that resonates but still feels totally authentic. Now, if that sounds like what you need, I want you to grab my new ebook, which you can see the link right below. It's called Get Where You're Going, Girlfriend, Six Steps to Actually Achieving Your Outrageous Goals. And in that ebook, you're going to learn how to get out of your own way, stop self-sabotaging, and get into inspired action like now. The three missing steps in the Ask, Believe, Receive manifestation model, and how and where to get the support you need to create the life and business that you dream of. So again, to get that, here's the link, carryrolledon.com forward slash ebook. Okay, so I created the Carrie Rolled On Show, as many of you already know, because I have stumbled and continue to on my entrepreneurial journey. You guys are going to see that like live and in person today. <laughs> uh, because the road to success thus far has been full of potholes, detours, and dead ends. Not to mention self-doubt, fear, worry, marital tension, and personal struggle. And I wanted to share what I continue to learn on my journey in the hopes that it's going to help you guys too. You guys, I told you, I'm your business BFF. <laughs> I am sharing, I am like airing my dirty laundry today um, in the hopes that it will help you. And I've also started a, a Google Plus community. So if you want to join me there, if you are a mompreneur or if you have a heart or a business that serves mompreneurs, I would love for you to join. Just head on over into Google Plus. Click the Communities tab, it'll be on the top left, and then um, type in Business Besties, and you will see my community pop up, and you can join it. Okay, so today's topic is social media on purpose with purpose, and without wasting time and money. Ugh, mompreneurs, you guys know it. We are busy people, and we don't have time to waste on social media. But let's face it, most of us are wasting time on social media. I am raising my hand because I am one of them. I know I need to have a social media presence to build my business, but it can often feel like a double-edged sword. Social media can be such a time suck. And which platform is best for my needs? People are telling me I need to be over here, but I like being over there. Uh, do I really need to be everywhere? Right now, I sort of have a different persona, depending on which platform you find me on. Um, but ultimately, right, I want to use social media for three main purposes, at least I think. To build my brand, to serve my audience, and to attract ideal clients. But quite frankly, I don't think I'm doing a very good job at any of these, at least not across all the platforms. Um, I have a feeling my audience is really confused <laughs> by what I put out. And if this is happening to my audience, it may be happening to yours too. Thank goodness we're going to be talking with Melanie McDonald today, who she and I have been chatting up in the green room. She's already helped me tremendously, so I cannot wait to bring her on. She has a background in graphic design and public outreach. Um, and has worked on projects ranging from movie posters and billboards from her days in Los Angeles to conducting water quality and, conser and conservation public outreach and her education programs that resulted in an annual savings of over five and a half million gallons of water in the small community of Desert Hot Springs, California, where she now resides. After the down economy found her laid off from her public information associate position, Milani turned to private consulting, and she now serves small business owners, public agencies, and solopreneurs with her graphic design and outreach strategy planning skills, which that's what we're going to be talking today is that your outreach strategy, right? That's what we want to do in social media. We want to outreach. So what does this have to do with social media, you ask? Well, I just told you. <laughs> um, so let's get going. Melani, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself. I will put your beautiful face on the screen and say hello to everyone out there in Google Plus land. <laughs> 
Hi, everybody. Thanks so much, Carrie, for bringing me on the show today. Um, really having a good time already, enjoying talking to you in the green room, getting excited about what we'll be talking about today. So what's your first question for me? Yeah, so, oh my gosh, you guys. Sorry, I'm looking at my other screen right now, just pulling... Um, pulling you guys up because you don't even know the Google problems that I've been having today. Um, but Melani and I were talking in the green room, which is sometimes dangerous for my show because I forget that you guys haven't heard the whole conversation. So I'm going to go track to the back to the beginning and say, all right, Melani, I confess I don't really know like, like I said in my intro, I don't even really know who I am on what platform. How the heck am I expecting my, um, my audience to know? Um, you know, Carrie, I, I think you hit it right on the head there. If you don't know yourself, you can't expect your audience to know each other. When I have a client that I'm helping in the consulting, before we get to the social outreach, I have them do a brand identity session because in that brand identity session we flesh out what it is that you want your brand identity and reputation to be because you don't want it to just happen without any guidance and cultivation and nurturing. You want to cultivate a strong brand identity that sends the messages that you want to send to the people that you want it to send to. So in that session, we go over things like what do you want people to feel about your products and your services? What do you want them to think about the products and services? And we start with think because that's where you start now. When you're answering those questions, the answer to those questions eventually become the messages that you have in your social outreach efforts. I want people to think this about me, about Carrie. I want people to think that I can really help them and save them time and save them money and get a product from idea to market. So that's what they think about you. What they're going to feel about you is generated by that thought and what they feel might be, oh my god, I am so grateful I found Carrie. I am so happy because I can sleep at night now. I'm not as stressed out. I, I feel confident. And those are the messages that people, when they feel about you, those are what they act on. They don't act on their thoughts. The thoughts generate the feelings and they act on their feelings. So then when they're telling other people about you or they're describing you or you're making a social share, those feelings that they have are going to be generated by those social shares. And your social messages are going to be determined by really cultivating and identifying that strong brand identity that you want. Okay, so um, you're not going to see my face for a second because I'm bringing up a comment, um, which is Terry Lee Britton. Hopefully I pronounced your name right, Terry. Um, there was a little talking because I was saying I helped mompreneurs and there was chatter about it being non-gender specific because I'm looking who's here and we have lots of males. Um, but he says being on purpose is a big deal. It's where everything should start. Yes. Which, um, hello, that's exactly what you just said, right? Is we've you've got to start with brand identity. Right. So you also talked about um, I, you need to know what you want people to think and feel. So I'm going to use myself as an example, and I'm going to tell you what's been happening in my business, and then I'm going to let you be this genius expert and tell me what to do. So, <laughs> which I have a feeling you're going to say we need to do some brand identity work, um, <laughs> but. I started in this online space as a life coach and as someone who really wanted to, um, I think there was a part of me, right, I've told this story in the past that when I was a little girl I wanted to be an author and I wanted to be a famous movie star or I wanted to be on television um, and I really wanted to be listened to. I wanted to be, I wanted to be, um, important, right? Like I wanted to have an impact. And um, those themes have sort of played out in what, I'm, what I've done in my life. And so I started in my business not being someone who helped people launch their products online at all. Not being someone who helped 
people find their niche. I started like in the online space because I'm a mom and because I quit my job to stay home with my kids and then felt like I had more to offer. So anyways, what I'm getting at is I picked up my passion. I picked running, which I love and has made this huge difference in my life and it seemed to be what people were coming to me for advice on and I, I felt like I was an expert in in running and I wrote a great book on it but it didn't it didn't have the legs the traction it wasn't it was no longer what people were asking me for because in learning how to figure out how to promote that whole running thing I found Google Plus, I found Hangouts, I wanted to gather other mompreneurs and like help them do this too. Um, and I have sort of this emerging identity. So I'm going to stop telling that story right now just to give you a chance to comment and um, say something. Well, a couple of things. A, you are really good at knowing yourself and knowing what it is that you want to do and that's a big step on creating your brand identity because then when you go and you ask yourself those pointed questions what do I want people to think about me what do I want them to feel about me you're, you're going to have answers for that but the other thing that I noticed is that you you listed some objectives and goals yeah and that is really important and when you are in a business and you are figuring out what your brand identity is and you've and you've gotten that part down you want to also Write down what are your business objectives. Where do you see yourself in one year? Where do you see yourself in three years? What do you want to be doing in five years? Do you want to grow your business and have a whole lot to manage? Or do you really like being a solopreneur with you know, not a huge multi-million dollar corporation, but just enough people to keep you happy and keep you in the lifestyle you want? So you want to write down what your business objectives and goals are. Because then when you're talking about doing social outreach you want to have objectives for your social outreach the biggest thing I see out there it's what Terry said and hi Terry is that they don't have a purpose they don't know why they're out there they're out there because oh there's 900 million people on Facebook and everybody says I need to be on there so they go on there but they don't really know why they're on there they haven't done their brand identity thing so they don't know what messages they want to send they don't know why they're sending their messages they don't have any goals so for the social outreach stuff you want to you want to create those objectives and those objectives have to support your business objectives so in your case you you went from wanting to talk about running to realizing that this experience of getting that book to market made you realize that hey I like sharing my knowledge of how I made this happen with other mompreneurs who have something that they want to take to market right so your identity kind of changed a little bit there and it's not so much the running person as it is the 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 guide the guide who can show you how to do step A step B step C you are the you're the you're the coach, you're the consultant, you're the guide, you're the person that can take them to market and cut out a lot of the stuff that you had to go through learning. And that's the same thing I do because all the stuff that I'm teaching is stuff that I learned on the way and it's like, oh my God, it took me like how long to learn this stuff? Well, I'll just show you what I learned so you can like save yourself a lot of the pain that I went through and see what worked for me. Now that doesn't mean that what worked for me is the only way to do it. I'm just showing you what worked for me and if you're in a you know sort of a similar situation and your goals are the same then it may well work for you. And when you go out there and see what everybody else is doing, you know, notice the things that they're all doing the same. Those things are going to work and just because they work, right? They work, um, yes. they work for you, they work for whoever's watching. There are certain things that we, we know work from the experience of seeing how many people are doing them. Yeah, and it's funny, I put myself on the screen, I realize people are watching me smile and nod to you. And also, <laughs> yes, I'm taking notes, like frantically taking notes while Melania is talking, recognizing this is why it's so important. No matter what you do, like no matter if you are, I feel like you are doing for me, what I'm very good at helping other people to do, but it's so, for some reason, it's really hard for us to do it to ourselves. 
Oh, oh, God, I know. I suffer so much from the do as I say, not as I do syndrome. <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking at what Marcus says, and I, I want to pull it up because he says, being clear about who you are and bringing that into alignment with your business is a difficult process, especially as a lot of people don't even know who they are and what they stand for. Right, and, and that's so true, and that's, that's why I actually made these worksheets because and it's always really helpful when I kind of coach people on going through the worksheets because I ask them the, the prompts and the questions and they're always, hmm, and by the end you have the stuff inside you but you, you don't know it and you're not sure how to organize it. What these do, this series of questions, are they're in order, they're pointed, they're strategic and they bring what's inside you, all that knowledge, out into a form where you can put it down on a piece of paper then you can look at it and go, ah, Oh yeah, okay, that totally makes sense now. I can see it. I can see how to get from point A to point B, where sometimes we're at point A, point B is over here. This is everything I want. How do I get here? I have no idea. Well, you know, this kind of gives you a guide of how to get there from point A to point B. And it goes back again with, with the social outreach. It's, it's your objectives, and then goals, and then action steps. It's a three-step process. Because okay. your objectives can be kind of broad. You know, so one of your objectives, let's say, is I want to cultivate my, my new brand identity. Well, that's kind of broad. How are you going to do that? So you break it down into bite-sized chunks and create goals. So your first goal might be, I'm going to take Melani's brand identity workshop because then I will know what my brand identity is that I want to nurture and that I want to cultivate and that I want people to think of when they think of me, right? So that is a goal that is a bite-sized chunk, and when, once you have done that single goal, you are a, a step closer to your objective. And you may have several goals that you lay out. So I just muted myself briefly because there was a helicopter flying overhead, um, but I want to, you've mentioned this workshop a couple times, and. When we were in the green room, Melani told me what she was going to choose to offer you guys in my audience, and like, no kidding, I about fell off my chair. So I'm really excited to let you know um, an offer that she has about that workshop. But before I do that, I need to tell you what I've already learned today, right? So, um, what I think the biggest lesson for me is recognizing that social media strategy doesn't start with social media strategy. That um, before, ooh, and Terry, sorry to cut you off all of a sudden, but Terry's asking where the checklist Melani is talking about. Terry, I promise to answer that in just one sec. Um, so what I've learned is that you said something in the very beginning. You said, until you know your business object objectives, you can't really know your social media objectives. And so what I'm recognizing in my own self is that, oh, God, I'm doing it. I'm doing what I tell people not to do, which is like, <laughs> I'm focusing on social media, on becoming known, because I feel like, ooh, I need to have a lot of people following me so that when I figure out what it is I do, they're going to want it. Um, not recognizing, of course, duh, until I really know what I want to do, I'm only going to be gathering people haphazardly. Until I'm very clear on um, who I want to help and why I want to help them and what I want to help them do, um, no social media strategy is going to work, right? No matter how awesome and entertaining I am, people might tune into my Hangout, but unless I'm clear on what it is I have to, um, who I want to be in their eyes and what I want them to think and feel about me, they're just going to think and feel, well, she's awesome and entertaining, but um, not take that next step. So that was a huge thing that I've already learned was before social media strategy, business strategy. <laughs> um, and then the second thing that I've learned from you is, and maybe I learned this in the green room, we can talk about it in a second, but um, before, so once I have business strategy, I still have to do this whole brand identity component. It is, it is um, enmeshed in business strategy. And so before we move on, because we only have like 10 minutes left, and I do want to talk about the different platforms and and it's so easy to get overwhelmed in the whole monkey see, monkey do thing. Um, but could you let people know what your amazing offer is for the people watching this Hangout? 
Yes, I am doing a workshop next Tuesday, the 24th, from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. PST. It is an intensive brand identity, build a strong foundation brand identity workshop. And so we go through this five-page worksheet that I have that helps you identify all those messages. What do you want your customers or potential clients to feel? What do you want them to think? How do you describe your goods in terms of benefits to them versus just in terms of here's what I think about it? Because that's another trap that a lot of people can easily fall into. My widget is so shiny. It, it's made from the newest alloys imported from you know Japan, and it's really cool. OK, that's cool. But let's say this instead. If you use my widget, I can cut your housework time in half, and you'll have more time to spend with your family and kids. Buying yeah. it. I'm buying it. <laughs> yeah, which one is going to make the sale? Right. So you need to learn to describe things in terms of lifestyle benefits and benefits to the clients and benefits to the customers. We identify who are the people that are going to be your target markets and audiences. Because a lot of time people just go out and they just think, I just want to everybody. I just want everybody. But, you know, no, really, don't just throw your seeds out to the wind and let the wind carry them where they may. You know, you want to find that little plot of land that's got a sufficient water supply, that's got the sunlight, that's got the good soil, and put them there. So find the people that already want your services. Find the ones that already need your services. So we identify some of those markets. Who are the people that want your widget that cut the housework time in half? Well, who's doing most of the housework these days? You know, and, and then that becomes a, another goal. Do some research. Who is my market? Let me see today who is doing most of the housework. Because, you know, in the 50s, it would have been the woman. Today, especially in the past decade when there were so many layoffs and so many people going into business and so many mompreneurs, I know a lot more people who... The, the husband in the household is the one who does the housework. So, <laughs> so that's you know your action step. Do the research. Find out who it is that you need to talk to. And then craft the message that's going to resonate with them. Again, that message in this example is, I'm going to cut your housework time in half. Another message is, you'll have more time to spend with your family. Another message is don't miss your kids growing up because you're too busy doing other things. So we start to craft these messages that are important to them. And then later on when you're doing your social strategies, here's all these great messages that you have ready to put out into social avenues that you've identified that your target audiences are watching. You know, once you've identified your market of the people who are doing the housework, well, where are they going? Where are their eyeballs? Where are they going to see your messages. So you mentioned talking about being on which platform. You don't have to be on every platform just because it's out there. And especially if you feel like you're wasting your time on it. I mean, I just got rid of my Facebook public profiles completely. I just got rid of my business ones because I felt like I was wasting my time. Now, am I saying Facebook is a waste of time? No. There's a lot of people that use it really well and it works for them. But I'm saying for me, it was a waste of time and left me frustrated. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like you. I like Hangouts. I found this great platform on Google+. Plus. I really love it, and that's where most of my focus is, and that's where most of my returns come. I also enjoy Twitter, and I, I, I don't like LinkedIn that much, but I recognize the value of it, so I go on there. And so, Me Melani, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I want to... Take a step back to your workshop. <laughs> oh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. So yes, there is a link. <laughs> okay, Terry Britton, the, there's a link to uh, the social media strategy planner in the comments un under this event listing. You right click, right click and download that link because it's a PDF, so you can just download it. And that's got uh, the slideshow and it's got the social media outreach kind of wor uh, worksheet. But for the brand identity workshop, there is another link also in the comments to my page on my website where you can sign up for this workshop. And when you sign up for this workshop, uh, it's a PayPal button, but you put your Gmail address in there because it's being held by a private Google Hangout event. 
and I need to invite you to the event to see the page. So once you have registered for the workshop and you've given me your Gmail, I will invite you using your Gmail address and you'll be able to come in and join in the workshop. And I'm doing a very special price just for Carrie's fans and her show of only $20. I'm trying out a $20 Tuesday thing. So it will be next Tuesday, the 24th, from 9.30 to 11.30, a pretty good intensive brand identity workshop that you're going to get a lot of value out of for a little bit of investment. Yes. That's not my regular price. No. <laughs> Oh my God, you guys, I told you I almost fell out of my chair. $20? It's a two-hour workshop. There, I just got like the tiniest sneak preview of it in the green room before we started. Like I got my $20 worth in the first like 38 seconds. So um, click that link. Melani, I'm sure, oh, and Terry's asking, is this the link? So I'm going to put it right on there. Um, Oh, it looks like it didn't take the whole, my comment tracker won't show the whole link, um, but I'll have Melani check it out for you, <laughs> Terry. Yes, yes, um, Terry, that's it. Thank you. Perfect. So, um, okay, so, so guys, do that, and then do me and Melani a huge favor, which is share this, share this hangout with your friends so that anybody who watches this hangout will get that price from Melani. And, oh my gosh, what an incredible value, right? So um, share it. So one, because the content is already amazing. Two, for that particular thing, that particular link. So make sure you share the whole event page because otherwise, I, if they just watch it on YouTube, they won't be able to see anything we're talking about as far as the um, comments go. Right. Okay, Milani, we have like three minutes left, but I want to talk briefly about the different platforms and about... I think that the thing we're, the thing that causes us anxiety, right, is you sort of touched on it. I know the value of LinkedIn. I feel like I should be doing it, but I've totally given up Facebook altogether because it was a waste of time for me. Not true for me, but can you just, like, sort of give us an overarching, how can we be on purpose, with purpose, on all of these different platforms? You know, that's a great question, and I, I think... It's going to at least partially come down to your personality, too, because not everybody fits in with every platform. So I found Google+. Plus. I love Google+. Plus. I have a great following on Google+, Plus, a great reputation on Google+. Plus. I get invited to awesome shows like yours, and I get a lot of connections that I make here on Google+. Plus. So, you know, this is where I spend m more of my time and where I make sure that I do my TGIF show twice a month and that I'm interacting with people and hanging out and having fun. I use Twitter mostly to, you know, what worked for me or what I found to be very useful was a third-party tool called Hootsuite. And with Hootsuite, you can go in and you can craft messages for LinkedIn, for Twitter, for other platforms without having to, okay, I'm done here, now i got to go to Twitter, now i got to go to LinkedIn and spend all this time. And so what I will do is I will spend the majority of my time putting stuff on Google+, creating my event pages, doing my Hangouts, and then I will promote those Hangouts on places like Twitter and LinkedIn, and in between the promotions so that it's not just a stream of promotions, I will put other stuff in there too that's kind of useful. If I write a new blog post, I'll put that in there so that it's it's not just, you know, here, go to my hangout <laughs> every time. But it's still, the main use for me for those is when I tell people to search for me on Google+. Plus now they see all these listings. It's not just Google+. Plus. They see listings on Twitter. They see listings on LinkedIn. And then that makes an impact on them, just the fact that they're seeing these results in search listings. So even if I'm not getting the same kind of impact out of LinkedIn and out of Twitter that I get from Google+, Plus, it still adds to building that reputation. It still adds to building that awareness. It still provides links back to the other places where I am more prone to spend extra effort. So it's cultivating a, a brand identity and cultivating a reputation. There's a lot to it, and there's a lot of different nuances and a lot of different levels. Not every single thing you have to do has to be a home run, you know, but as long as you're hitting the ball out there and it's not, you know, 
being caught by the guy right away <laughs> and you're getting to the bases, it's still good. You're still moving forward. Does that make sense at all? <laughs> totally, totally. And I think we spoke in the green room and I am going to wrap it up because it's 11, but I do, I don't know, um, I keep doing this to my guests. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> learn to ask them in the green room. I will stick around if I can. I'm having trouble posting. If I can, I'll post the link for you guys to hop in the green room after the broadcast is over. So if you want to continue the conversation, share your wisdom, or just say hello, you can uh, hop in with at least me. Milani, are you going to be able to stick around for a few yes. more minutes? Yes, I'll and, be. And Milani, she will be able to stay. Um, so I'll do that in just a moment. But what I wanted to say is, I have I am finding more and more that it's okay to let go of platforms like for some reason I don't resonate with Twitter and that's okay because I wasn't getting clients from Twitter anyway and with Facebook I'm learning my activity on Facebook needs to be really targeted to a couple of groups where I've cultivated a presence where people know me where like it's not all about just look at me look at me here I am look at what I'm doing like but it's very much my my interaction in Facebook is just in a few places um, and I think that has helped a lot. And then, like you said, I'm too. I'm finding a home on Google Plus um, because Google Plus is so much about. Um, I feel like it is about listening and learning, and that's the things that I things that I love to do. So, on that note, Melani, um, I will just put your face on. Any closing thoughts before we close it up and head? Yeah, into actually. I want to say hi to everybody out there. Hi, John. Hi, Terry. Everybody else who's who's watching. Hi, Marcus. There is an awesome game show hangout that is on Friday nights that I go to a lot. It's called Plus Word. And Terry Lee Britton, who's here, he's one of the contestants on there weekly. <laughs> and it's so much fun. And talk about, you know, wasted time on platforms and unwasted time. This is something I go to a lot on Friday nights. Not because I'm trying to do business, but because it's fun and we laugh and we have a good time and we have a glass of wine and we play this game. But that's where I met Terry Lee Britton and I've been trying to like talk the host to let me be his partner on one of the King Show episodes. So if I hadn't been doing that, would Terry be here? you know, making all these great comments. He's bumping up my links. He's helping. He's being really wonderful. And that's just you know, that's just another kind of organic connection that's being made. Being social doesn't necessarily mean always just but being on the block, putting your market stuff out. It means being social as well because you then create these wonderful connections and things happen organically too. So that's my closing thought. That's awesome, Melani, which reminds us to take it all the way back to social media, not business media, <laughs> right? Yeah. Social media. Um, and every business workshop we've ever been to, they all say it's all about relationships. And people are so often looking for the, how do I like bypass that and get them to buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. That's my dog barking. Um, but yeah, the truth is relationships and that's what these platforms are for. All right, so I'm going to close up, guys, and just say um, that thank you so, so much for being here, Melani. Thank, thank you. you to Terry. Thank you for John, Marcus, and the rest of you who are watching. Thank you so, so much for being here and commenting live. As you know, I'm on a mission. I keep saying to serve mompreneurs, but I might need to change that because so often the people who show up to my hangouts are um, – Male. So, <laughs> but I am, I'm on a mission to help, let's say, entrepreneurs embody mind and business. And if you haven't already, head over to carryroldon.com forward slash ebook. Get the six steps to actually achieving your outrageous goals. Here's a great big virtual hug from me. Um, normally at this point I say tune in next Wednesday, but I am not having the show next Wednesday. Um, because I'm actually helping a friend launch a very amazing product. So look for that um, from Gail Nowak. It's going to be fantastic. I will be posting about that instead. So if you're marking your calendars for next Wednesday at 1030, instead, just, just don't. How about that? Just look for my posts about Gail Nowak, and I'll, I'll leave it all mysterious at that. So again, thank you so, so much for being here. I'm going to hit the Stop Broadcast button, and then... Hopefully, I will be able to post Milani. I'm going to put Milani on there. She's waving. Um, 
hopefully I will be able to post the link. I've been having trouble posting on my event page, but either Milani and I will post the link into the green room so that you guys can join. So thanks again. I will see you not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after that.